Yeah, hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome to my new tutorial. Today we will have a look a bit into the future of CSS. Mm, we will have a look at the property display grid. And um, with this property you can actually mm, style your page in a totally new way. And um, it is kind of a substitution for the old float modeling or the inline box models. And um, tries to give you more control over your design and especially <coughs> um, to split better um, between design and structure of a website. We will have a look at it now and um, I will show you in the first time which browsers you can use now to <coughs> to find out how it is working. Um, so you see the IE and the Edge are kind of um, impl had, um, kind of implemented it already um, but just with some special prefixes. Um, Firefox is not supporting it by default, but you can enable it by um, setting some flag. And the same with Chrome. Here you actually can enable it as well by um, setting a flag and using this experimental uh, web platform feature. Um, so you see all browsers are kind of working on it, um, all important browsers to say. And um, you really can start learn it because it is kind of... Um, uh, uh, most likely that um, this feature will be implemented soon. So, as you can see, mm, you can enable this feature in your Chrome browser, in your um, current pro Chrome browser, by going to um, Chrome Flags. Just have a look here. Chrome Flags is a URL. And there you just have to search for the keyword Enable Experimental Web Platform Features. And click just on Enable, I already enabled it, and restart your browser. And that's all you have to do to start experimenting with Display Grid. So let's go to our page. So I deleted the CSS so that we can start from scratch. I already built some simple HTML structure. So I made a header, I made a navigation, I made a section with some Lauren Ipsum text in it. And I made a footer, so a very basic CSS HTML structure which you can use um, and where I will show you now the functionality of display grid. So let's have a start. Let's go and style the body. And here we will just make the display grid. So this is what you already know display here you can make block or inline block or whatever I made a tutorial about that already so have a look there but this new feature is called grid and now you a bit have to think about your features um, uh, design of your uh, future design of your website mm. you have to think about how many columns do you need on your page and how many rows so we will start by setting the columns so we are having a header, a navigation, a section, and a footer. So we will have a first um, column where we actually set um, the header in one full column, so the full width of the screen. The nav and the section we will make in two parts, so it will be two columns. And the footer will be as well, again, the full width of the screen. And you keep in mind here, you have to um, you have to count as well the margin columns, so the columns between this, for example, now the navigation and the section. So all in all, we will have one column where header, navigation, section, and footer is. The second column, this is a column between navigation and section, and a third column where now the header and the section and the footer is. So. Let's do that. You are doing this by grid template columns. Keep in mind here that these <coughs> properties here of CSS are kind of still a bit different because they are in developer phase still. So in the IE or in the Edge browser, it may be possible that they are differently called, but the functionality is kind of the same. 
So that's why I advise you to use um, Chrome now for this tutorial and setting up this um, experimental web platform feature. So we are giving the navigation, the first column, 150 pixels. Then we will give 1% for the margin between um, the navigation and the section. And we will give, and this is now actually really useful as well, one fraction for the rest, so for the section. So you see already here is something happening. And now it looks like a bit creepy still, but um, this one fraction means use all the rest of the available space which you have. So it's perfectly responsive. So we have 150 pixels for the navigation, 1% for the margin, and one fraction for the rest. In this case, our section. Because footer and header, we will make the whole column long. Now, let's do the same for the rows. Because as well, for the rows, you have to think about it before. And let's count how many rows we will have. You, um, again, we have to count the margins between the rows as well as rows. So we have a, a header, this is the first row. We have a margin, the second. We have a navigation section row. This is the third. We have a, again a margin. This is the fourth. And at le but last but not least, we have a footer. So this is the fifth row. So let's define now the um, dimensions of this rows. So we make again grid template rows. And just set up the dimensions. So we will make the header auto. So it depends on the content on the header in the header. We make the margin 50 pix 15 pixels. We make um, the navigation section again auto. And again the margin 15 percent uh, pixels. And last but not least the footer again auto depending on the content. In it. Okay, so. These are the basic settings now, so we can now continue going to the um, individual uh, sections here in our HTML uh, structure, and we will start with the header. Let's give all of them kind of a different color, so it's better visible actually what is happening section and the footer. So we will make a background to it. Um, background. We'll give it here a light green. I will pause the video for a second. So welcome back. So here I just said it sets the background for each section here and I will make for all of them for the header, for the nav, for the section and for the footer <coughs> I will set a padding of let's say 10 pixels just so it's looking a bit better mm. okay so we can start now with the header as I said before you are really splitting design and structure with this display grid feature in C CSS. So it doesn't matter in which order or however you are making here your sections, you are setting it here in CSS now where they are should be appear. So for the header we will say where it shall appear, of course in the first row because it is a header. So we are making grid row one first. And now we are telling the browser how why, um, how large this um, header shall be. And as we said before, it shall be the whole column. Um, so we are saying grid column start one. So in the first column it shall start in grid column and in the last column it shall end. So, you see already what's happened. The browser knows now that this header here is, has a background of light green, this um, 
that's for sure, and has a grid row 1, so it's the first row of all the rows, the first row is now the header, and the columns are set by start and end, so the first and the fifth, so the first and the last column, this means the whole width of the browser. So it doesn't matter now how, width, um, how you define the width now, it will always keep the whole um, space. Okay, let's go to the navigation. Here we are setting again which row. So navigation is in the first, second, third row. Always keep in mind the margin is a row for itself. So it is row, grid row, third. And now we are th setting the column because we don't want this navigation um, fit the whole screen width. We want to give it a special width, so we actually just want to have it in the first column. So the first column is set here as 150 pixels width. So we make grid column 1. So now we still don't see any effect because we haven't set the, the other mm, columns in this row, which will be the section which is a width of one fraction, which means the rest of the space. So let's set this. The grid row is, like the navigation, 3. And the grid column, let's count, will be first column where the navigation is, no. The second column is a margin, no, as well not. So it's the third column. So we Tell the browser, third column. So you see already here now we are having the navigation and we have the section. So what is about the footer now, our last element? Here we are saying grid row. So this is, of course, the last row, which is our one, two, three, four, fifth row. It's already jumping there. And let's give it a full width so we can actually copy this here start and end 1 to 5 and you see the footer has now the full width of the browser yeah and actually that's all about it so keep in mind you are setting the main container and in our case it's a body to display grid and giving them the whole structure kind of a template for the columns and the template for the rows. So you are setting all your columns, including the margins between it, and all the rows as well, including the margins between it. And then you are starting and defining where your elements, your HTML elements, shall appear. So the header, for example, shall appear in the first row, and we will give them all the columns, so the full width. The navigation is um, appearing in the third row, and you will give the navigation the first column to appear. And the section is the third row as well, and you are making it appear on the third column. So, one, two, three, third column. So, and with the footer, you are making the same like with the header here in our case. And you are set up with your website and your new design, which is totally independent. I will show you now. When you are making the section area now, you just cut it out here and put the section just in the first area. You see nothing is changing here. The header is still over the section, though here it is the other way around, the section and the header. It is of course not um, uh, advised. I don't advise you to make it like that, especially when you are using the semantic HTML5 elements. With div containers, of course, you will not see the, um, any differences here. But, um, yeah, just to show you that it really doesn't matter in which order your HTML is. Yeah, that's actually all about it. I hope you had some fun. 
keep in mind this is all experimental still um, try it out with the chrome but it's really nice to learn and um, yeah i hope you had fun and um, i'm looking forward for your comments